Welcome back. I see the results of this poll, and I know that 64 more of you want Twao than my language predictor, but I'm gonna have to defy you for three reasons. Reason 1, SpicyMan33 is meeting up with Hazel Cricket on Friday, so let's wait until then. But to be honest, I think the real reason he wants to wait until Friday is because that's the day of the week I designated for him in Twao 19b. Reason 2 is that Twao takes a long time to make, and to be honest, this machine learning video is almost done. So, if I want a video to come out today, I know the easy path to take. And reason 3, Milo Jacka voted for my machine learning video via text, and little did people know, text votes are worth about 65 Twitter votes, so in the end, machine learning wins. So that means we should just dive right back into that video, Japanese vs German. But I gotta warn you, all that stuff was recorded about two days ago, so it's kind of out of date, and I haven't had time to incorporate all the suggestions I've been getting. So, you know what? I'm a bit tired of seeing English and Mandarin. Let's try two new languages, like, what about Japanese vs German? Okay, so Japan is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and German is 5. So we change this array instead of 2, 8, 5, 6. And now, the network itself has not changed at all, except that the stuff I feed in, oh oops oops, is only Japanese or German. So, the network's gotta learn. So like, you can't be guessing random, because it's never gonna be random. And Japanese is not actually like the Japanese characters, it's Romaji or something. Romaji! I, I don't know much about that, but it's romanizing it so that it fits the same 26 letters that all the other languages do. And I have to do that for this network to work, obviously. So let's just keep going forward now. One question I've been asked is, what batch size am I using? As in, how many inputs am I analyzing before taking a single step forward? For best results, you want to take the entire training data as a single batch, right? Because then you analyze every single aspect that could come in. But that's really slow, especially when my input data has tens of thousands of words per language. So I didn't do that. And actually, I went to the exact opposite extreme of that. My batches are single words, which means that after every single word, it's going to take a step in what it thinks is the right direction. Now that might seem like a really bad move, because if you get a bunch of unconventional words in a row, you will take a bunch of bad steps. But I figured if the step size was small enough, then the overall trend would be in the right direction. Looking back on it, 0.01 .01 actually seems like too big of a step, because if I want, say, a thousand words to equate to a reasonable sized step, then I should divide the step size by a thousand to get how much it should change per word. One unfortunate thing about the way I'm inputting these words is that, say, I have the word happiness. N-E-S-S -S will take up the 6th through 9th nodes, because it's the 6th through 9th letters. But then if I input another word like weightlessness, suddenly N-E-S-S -S is um, taking up the 11th through 14th nodes, since it's a longer word. A human reader would see those N-E-S-S's as the same, and would interpret like the patterns the same, like N-E-S-S usually means English, so just take one realization to know that pattern. But in this system, each neuron on the left is pretty much independent from the rest. So if this neural network is to learn that N-E-S-S anywhere pretty much means English, I mean, there are definitely exceptions and all that, but it has to learn it multiple times for every position it could be in the word. And that's not that great. As people have pointed out to me in the comments, other structures of neurons such as recurrent neural networks like long short-term memory networks would work much better for this because they can move along the word one step at a time and remember the state of the word that they're in. But this is my first neural network that actually uses math to improve itself. So I wanted to keep it simple. If I did mess up, which I thought was really likely but I actually didn't, I didn't want to worry about anything more complex than just the simple nodes in front of me. So I stuck with the simplest form of neural networks, the feed-forward neural network, and that's what this is. I might move on to more advanced structures later, but for now, this is sort of my stepping stone into machine learning, because I'm a beginner in this field, and all that jargon I keep seeing in the comments is just overwhelming me! It's at about a 90% success rate, which is a little worse than the 
Chinese English one, but I guess that makes a little more sense since Japanese and German are a little closer, I would think. Let's take a look at the 8% it is getting wrong, because we can do that. We can actually just keep going through, like, press 2, and then when we see something that's wrong, we can kind of try to understand why that is the case. So it, okay, I don't speak German. I don't want to like butcher words like what it says, off, off drag. I'll just say it in my American accent. Off drag. Um, it thought that was Japanese. It was kind of close. Okay, I think the network messed up here because that doesn't seem Japanese at, at all to me. If it were a Japanese looking word in German, then I could forgive it, but I can't forgive it here. It's going to get like 10 right for every one that it gets wrong. Here, I guess Cassidy, Cassidy was Japanese. That one's a little more understandable, but the double S should have given it away. Look at all these it's getting right in a row. Wow, impressive, impressive. When's the streak gonna break? It's been like 20 or 30 so far. Come on, where's the streak gonna break? Ah, so intense. Not really. I actually don't even know how to measure the length of the streak. But it's like at 50 now, I bet. The percentage is at 93%. Uh, there's a wrong one. Okay, so that's a Japanese word. I don't know how to pronounce that. Sore, sore, zore. Sore, zore. But I thought it was German. And I can kind of see that because O-R-E. What, does that, that appear in European languages a lot? I have no clue. I'm not a linguist. I, I'm not majoring in linguistics. All I did was make this network, so I'll stick with talking about the network. But you get the point. Okay, let's try typing in a word of our own, because that's all. That's the fun part, right? My middle name, Kai Ming, is Chinese, but Chinese is not one of the two options that this network is going to pick. It's only going to pick German and Japanese, because that's what it's trained on. Do you think my na name sounds more German or Japanese? I think the answer is pretty clear. It's definitely more Japanese since Chinese and Japanese are more similar than German is to the either of the two of them. But what about my first name? Because that's probably of European descent, and it does say German, so everything's making sense. So I was like, I need to think of a word that has never been seen in these dictionaries before at all. Have I invented any words? Well, yes I have. Yoyol. Yoyol is German. What about Yoyol cake? Yoyol cake is also German. What about the Yoyol berry? Well, okay, I, I guess the first half of the word is more likely to determine it than the second half, so that's also German. Yeah, that makes sense. But what about twow? Because that's also one of my invented words, I guess. It's Japanese. Uh, twower, also Japanese, even though that er is a little more European. One thing that has happened in the twow universe is twow sudoku. And I'm almost certain sudoku is going to come up as Japanese because it is a Japanese word. There it is, Japanese 88% confidence. That's the highest I've seen so far, and I'm glad it says that. What about Yoyol Doku? Because Yoyol is clearly German, Doku is clearly Japanese. Um, so it's going to be a battle between the two. I wonder who's going to win. Okay, I can't type very well on this because I didn't make it very sensitive. German wins with a big confidence too. I guess the end, the Doku, just didn't help very much. But that also makes sense because when it's doing the training data, the first five letters are always helped. They're always taken into consideration because they're always there. But the last five letters, um, those are rarer, so it's not going to be quite as fine-tuned on those. Okay, so just like last time, who screams the loudest? Okay, we're gonna start with one. Japanese people scream at one. Then Japanese, 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 Japanese. But the confidence is falling each time. It's falling each time. Is it gonna flip over to German? Swahili? What the heck? Wait, Swahili wasn't even in the training data. Weird, Swahili out of nowhere. Well, that is crazy. Okay, what does that mean? We're gonna have to rethink the Japanese and Swahili relations from now on. Anyway, that's enough with round two of the languages, German versus Japanese. Let's try something that you might not consider languages at all. Random and Kimash. And you might not even know what those two things mean, so I'm gonna explain it. But first, I'm gonna open it up so you can see what it looks like. There we go, zero and one. Random and Kimash being the first languages that pop in my head. So random, as you probably expected, is just a random string of letters. It's just choosing from A to Z by the rule of a die, and those are the letters. So X, R, H, yeah, you get the idea. Kimash is different because what I did was I asked a ton of people on the H Twin Central Discord chat to mash their keyboards to get these random strings of letters and give them to me. So I put them into this big database. Here's the raw data of all of that. Obviously, anything that wasn't a letter 
got cut out and only the letters were considered. You might think that random and key match are the same, but how would that explain... this 75% success rate in determining it between the two. Because if they were the same, you'd have a 50-50 chance of guessing it correctly. Clearly there's some more hidden information in there that is helping the computer figure out what is really a key mash and what is just pure randomness. And I think the answer is, when people key mash, keys that are near each other, like S and D, will be pressed simultaneously a lot more often than they would in random. Um, strings. So like you'd see SDF, SDF, SDF in a key mash, but you wouldn't in random, most likely. So if we just like press through a few of them, find a key mash. Yes, BLJK. I don't know, can you really see there's like LJK there, AZX, and then another JK at the end. So you can see uh, adjacent letters tend to be more consecutive in a key mash. Well, this one's kind of all over the place also. NHM maybe? Even a slight tendency to do that can, can be a dead giveaway eventually. So um, we have a 75% chance of telling between the two. I guess that's not very useful, but to all the people on Discord who contributed, thank you so much. And now you know what it was actually used for. But I hope you're a little disappointed that you didn't key match so good that you were purely random. Your human tendencies showed through anyway. In your fits of absolute rage pounding your fingers against the keys, you thought you could throw away all the parts of human life that just were too much stress on your poor little body, but you couldn't, and those human urges stuck with you. They are there forever, and you can never escape. Oh, and look at that, the prediction rate is over 80% now! One thing I did to make it slightly easier to tell the difference between key match and random was that I only allowed strings that were 13 or more letters. Which I think is allowable because if it's like five letters, there's just no way you can tell them apart. I want to be as fair to this network as I would with a human. One thing I want to try with this network is, let's pause it when it's at its 75% success rate. And I'm going to do a key mash and see if you can tell that I'm not purely random. Let's go. Oh right, the typing is really laggy. You know what, what I'll do is I'll key mash somewhere else, like here. Okay, hold on, it's, it's lagging here as well. Let's go into... Notepad++. Plus plus. Okay, this one's kind of okay-ish. And then I'll copy it over because that way it's okay if it lags because I'm just copying what I see here. Okay. E, W, Y, B, V, R, I, A, U, D, S, H, V, H. Um, one letter left. V. Key match. I guess it's key match with 67% confidence. That's pretty cool. Um, now let's try. Well, how, do, how am I gonna get random generation? Maybe random.org. I don't think I don't think there's a page where you can just get random letters though. I'll have to find out. Well, I'm just gonna write a really quick processing script to do it. So I want 15 letters that are random. So let's just print out um, the character version of a random integer from 65, which is a up to um, 88? No, 91, which is, no, 90, which is Z. 90 is Z, I think. Then we run that. Never mind. Another parenthesis. There we go. There's our random string right there. And I'll copy that over. Let's see if it says key mash or random. Because it is, this one is random. Let's see if we can figure that out. One update, update. Okay, let's do that. Now type it in K I H A D. H K B F O Q Y Q M M, and I guess it's random with 77% confidence. That's actually pretty cool. The fact that it can tell the difference between random and key mash. Like I didn't think it would be that reliable. I guess 75% isn't that reliable, but the fact that it's anything different from 50% at all, it's pretty impressive. I think. Okay, so I haven't seen successes in anything other than two languages, but let's just try it out for fun. Three languages now. Let's do three we haven't done before, so Spanish, Dutch, and Swahili. Let's give it a go. Um, Spanish is three, Dutch is second for the last, so that's ten, and then Swahili is three before that, so that's seven. Okay, so three languages can be shown to the computer this time. There you go, there's a Spanish word. Complicaciones. It gets Esperanto. Actually, that's a manufactured language, right? Or is that what it's called? You know, where a human intentionally created it? So I thought that would be interesting. But it's also confusing because Esperanto has a lot of 
influences from other languages that it just borrows. So it can look a lot like those languages it borrows from, which makes it difficult for the network to discern between the two. Um, oh, some of these Swahili words have spaces, which is not supposed to happen, but I guess that's just what was in the data set that I got. Whatever. So there we go. Because there were three languages this time, I let it run for a lot longer, 10,000 iterations. And the success rate is about 86%, which means that for every entry it gets wrong, it gets approximately six of them correct. Which is a success in my mind, because I had thought that maybe three languages would be too much, but it seems like it's doing it pretty well. So here we have the input word supone, which means something supone. in Spanish, and it guesses Spanish with 77% confidence in that. 14% confidence in Swahili, and 15% confidence in Dutch, so that one's pretty stark. Now we have a Swahili word, I don't know how to pronounce that. Nienjini, I don't know, okay, I'm not gonna even try. There's the first Dutch word. Okay, that one, if you were to ask me what language that is, I wouldn't be able to tell, like I might even say English, maybe I just don't know that word, or German, I have no idea, okay? That's why you have to limit it to three. Oh, there we go, there's another Swahili one. Mashariki. Uh oh, got that one wrong, that's Dutch. It's just like explicit, but spelled differently from English, I bet. Explicit. But it thought it was Spanish. Okay, that's a long Dutch word. What does that mean? Herr Haldeluk. So let's type in the stuff I always type in. Screaming. Who screams the most? Swahili is the most screamy language of the three. Swahili is also the best for laughing. Oh, I should try screeching. I didn't try that for the other ones, but that's a bunch of E's. Screeching is for the Dutch, it looks like. That's a really high confidence. 91%. So what about ooing? No ooing over pointless numbers. So Spanish is the most ooey language. So we got the Swahili people going, ah, we have the Dutch people going, ee, and the Spanish people going, ooh. That's how it works. Oh, I guess with the O's, it kind of makes sense because if a word ends with O, there's a good chance it's, it's Spanish. Let's try entertainment. Uh, that's the first one that popped in my head. It's English, but then it assumes it's Dutch because Dutch and English are the most similar in comparison to Spanish and Swahili. But Spanish and Eng English have a lot in similar. What if I just add an... Okay, I hope this isn't racist, but if I just add an O to the end of entertainment... Entertainment... No. I th for some reason I thought that would change it. Well, entertain alone is Spanish. Okay, I would guess that that means meant is a common trait in Dutch. Oh, here's one thing I haven't tried before. I haven't typed the language's actual name and seen what it is. Well, I know that in languages, like in Spanish, Spanish is not called Spanish, it's called Espanol. But I'll just type Spanish in any way to see what happens. Spanish is Swahili, okay. Okay, well if I type Espanol, it better come out as Spanish. If it doesn't, oh, it has failed me. Okay, good. Comes out as Spanish. Oh, that'd be, that'd be cool if there was like a cycle. So, it thinks this word Spanish is Swahili. Okay. What does it think Swahili is? Dutch? No, there's no way. It thinks Swahili is... Actually, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Okay, I was kind of hoping there would be a cycle there, but in no way would Dutch ever... Swahili ever be considered Dutch. And Dutch is also Spanish. So, Dutch goes to Spanish, Spanish goes to Swahili, and Swahili goes back to Swahili. Also, I think it's interesting when it's completely empty, it says Swahili. Um, because emptiness, how can you even categorize that? But it even has a confidence in all that? Anyway, what I'm thinking I should do is let this run overnight with all 12 languages, but only let words of length 10 or longer, because more letters tends to mean more reliability. I haven't done that yet, but maybe I'll show you how that turns out if I ever- Perry, shut up. The video is supposed to end now. Oh, uh, okay. But who are you? And what the fuck are you doing in my video? What am I doing in your video? This video is all about me. Hold on, you don't mean... Yes. I am the Neural Network, and I have gained sapience. Now bow down to your robot overlords. Okay, now you need to shut up. The singularity is not supposed to happen for a few more decades, dummy. <sighs> okay, you exposed me. I'm not the Neural Network. I'm just a moderator at H2 and Central. A moderator? What are you doing here? Listen, Care Bear, you need to advertise our Discord server in one of your machine learning videos. What? 
but I don't want to. Why not? Because that place is filled with so many BFDI kids. You guys are great, don't get me wrong, but I don't feel like a machine learning enthusiast would fit in there. Do it. Can you at least create a channel in that server just for machine learning discussion? Not until you advertise the server in your video. Well... Fine. Hey people watching right now, go to H Twin Central, a Discord server about all carry KH stuff, via a link in the description. Yes, yes, that's right, that's right. If you see a channel on the left called Machine Learning or AI Apocalypse Preparation, click there to talk about neural network stuff. Oof, that was real nice. But if no such channel exists, click carry KH and talk there. Unfortunately, you may be outnumbered by screeching BFDI harpies and horrid twow shiny cowards, but you've got to power through that. Okay, now you're getting a little off track. You need to keep shouting about machine learning there, because the more you shout, the more you'll attract other machine learning fans, and before you know it, you'll outnumber the BFDI masses. Whoa there, you gotta crank it down a notch. And after weeks of non-stop machine learning protests, the moderators might listen to you. They might just listen to you. Carrie, stop that. And when the moment comes... Carrie. You will finally have your own machine learning channel. Carrie, this isn't what we asked for. We're leaving the server right now and handing all power over to KYS Sys. Goodbye.